Hello fantastic people! Let me start this video with a question. What do the vines, rope bridge and trapdoor have in common? Well, they can all be created using a hinge joint 2D. Let me show you how. Over here I have a simple trapdoor sprite. I start by adding to it a box collider 2D. And of course adjusting its size and position. Just after that I add the hinge joint 2D component. Notice that the rigid body 2D component has been added automatically. If we start the game now we'll see that the sprite behaves like it was attached to the scene by a screw placed at its pivot point. Already at this point the character can interact with it in interesting ways. Let's have a look at some interesting settings. The most interesting one is the connected rigid body. We'll be using it heavily later. At this point all you need to know is that it allows you to specify to what object the current object will be attached. If no rigid body has been selected, the object will be attached directly to the scene. Another interesting options are the angle limits. They allow you to specify the rotation limits. Notice that the values can be lower than 0 and larger than 359. Because sometimes you may want to allow the object to rotate more than one whole circle. In order for the limits to work, you have to make sure that the use limits checkbox has been checked. Now let's have a look at the motor. The motor will start to apply certain force to the game object in order to make it rotate at a given speed. Of course for it to work you have to check the use motor checkbox. There's not too much to be said about the motor speed. Positive value will make it rotate in one direction and the negative one in the other. The force however is much more interesting. If its value will be too small, the object won't be able to rotate freely. Also the force dictates what will happen to the game object when other rigid body objects will interact with it. For example, if the force will be pretty low, objects moving with certain force will be able to stop or even reverse the rotation. And of course on the contrary, pretty large maximum motor force will prevent other objects from doing that. And of course there is no problem with combining angle limits and motor together. So I'm going to set the motor speed to minus 100, maximum motor force to 10, lower angle to 0 and upper angle to 90. Then I'm going to move the trapdoor to the right position. And here we have fully functional one-way trapdoor. One small tip. Sometimes you may want your contraptions to do not collide with the ground or with some other objects for that matter. In this case, if the trapdoor would collide with ground, it would be disastrous. So already before the video I ensured that the objects in the ground layer do not collide with each other. You can do that in the project settings in the physics 2D section. Just make sure you are using the physics 2D, not the physics section. Now let's create swinging vines. We'll need for that modular sprite, something like that. We just have to make sure that the pivot point of each section is in the right place. Basically we want to think around which point we want the objects to rotate. Now I'm placing one of the sections in the level. For the vine you have to decide if you want the collider to be on each section or only on the last one. This will of course affect which section of the vine will be interactable. Now I'm decreasing the size of the box collider. And just after that, as previously, I add the hinge joint to the component. Now I copy paste the object twice. And of course, I change the sprite of each of those new objects. And of course, now I need to position them correctly. Of course, your vine may have more than three sections. There's no problem whatsoever with that. Starting from the very bottom, I set the connected rigid body. For the third section, I use the second section. For the second, I use the first one. And for the first one I leave the field empty. This will connect the three sections together and then the whole vine to the scene. And we have a basic vine. It will however take very long for the vine to stop. To be fair I'm not even sure at this point if it would stop completely ever. We can help it stop by adjusting the linear drag and angular drag on the rigid body of each section. You have to experiment with the values a little bit. Two low values will have almost no effect. 
and too large will make the fine look completely unnatural or even stiff. Just remember that you can also adjust the mass and gravity scale if needed. Just make sure that accidentally you do not change the body type to something else than dynamic. Now let's have a look at some extra settings on the hinge joint itself. When two rigid bodies are connected with hinge joint, by default the collisions between them are disabled. If you would like them to collide with each other, make sure you check the Enable Collision checkbox. If you are not happy about the rotation point or the place where the objects are connected with each other, you may want to adjust the anchor and connected anchor. To be fair, if you have the pivot points set up correctly, you probably won't need to do that. At the very bottom of the component, you will see two interesting values, the brake force and brake torque. They allow you to break the joint once a certain force or torque are applied. For example, when a certain object collides them with a certain force. Ok, the vine is almost ready. Whenever I have object that consists of multiple sections, I like to group all of them under one parent object. Then I should probably also change the object to a prefab. In case I would need to adjust any settings, I could do it in one place and this automatically would be applied to all instances of that prefab. And now let's create the rope bridge. The process will be pretty similar. This time the sprite's pivot point is on the far left. Once again I start by adding the box collider to the and the hinge joint to the. I duplicate the section multiple times, but now I also create an empty game object called Bridge End. This time I add only hinge joint 2D to it. Because I don't want it to move anywhere, I change the body type on the rigid body from dynamic to static. Once again, on each of the sections besides the first one, including the bridge end, I set the connected rigid bodies. Now to make the bridge look a little bit nicer, I adjust the positions and rotations of each section. And of course, all of those sections could be grouped under one parent object and then turned into the prefab. If you feel the bridge is too wiggly, you can adjust the linear and angular drag. And we are done. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to leave a comment and like under this video. This will definitely help to please the algorithm gods. But even if you don't, have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.